floss tube. It's Megan, Stitching Moon, and I'm back for another floss tube update. And this is floss tube number 19. And today is June 2nd. It's already June. I can't even believe that. <laughs> this year, it's one of the fastest years that I've like remembered. And I blame it on stitching because this is the first year I've stitched every single day. Although I missed one day, but pretty much every single day. And you know, when you're stitching, you never have enough time and time flies when you're stitching. So I really think it's because of stitching and doing, you know, floss tube and just being, having so much fun in this world that it's going by so fast, which I don't know if it's good or, a good thing or a bad thing, but we're having fun. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> I have a lot to talk about. So I'll get right into it and I first want to announce the giveaway from well kind of last video and two videos ago when I forgot to mention the keyword so this is the second giveaway I'm doing to celebrate reaching a thousand subscribers and the keyword was friends so I just right now did the random comment picker there were 42 comments that had the word friends and our winner, drum roll, oh, and the, what you're winning is either you have a pick of either a Heaven and Earth design pattern or an Etsy gift card, $25. So, ready? The winner is Lisbeth Jenny Mosund, and she's a Norwegian. I'm so excited that someone from Norway won. Uh, I will read her comment here. Hi from Oslo. Love your channel and your own design. I have all the Nora Corbett Zodiac and love your explanation on them. Love making friends in this community. Lika til me etsi salg o guset namai. So little Norwegian at the end basically said, good luck with your Etsy sales and happy 17th of May, which is like Norway's Independence Day. So Lizbeth, yay. <laughs> Get in contact with me if you're on Instagram. Mine is Stitching Moon. Yeah, just Stitching Moon. So you can either DM me there or um, I'll comment on your comment and we can, yeah, we can figure it out. <laughs> so, and let me know what your pick is. All right. So next I want to talk about, so hope you don't mind. I want to start with some new patterns that I made and put in my Etsy shop and yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I love, I love doing this. And I hope you're okay with, with seeing them. And we'll definitely get into stitching, don't worry. <laughs> so I tried to bring up my the store or Etsy in general on my iPad, but for some reason Etsy wasn't loading. I have some things on there that I kept up in those show, but Etsy wasn't loading on my iPad. So I had to pull it up on my computer. So this might be awkward <laughs> showing you, but I'll try. <laughs> And you've seen these if you're on my Instagram, most likely, but the first one is called Home Sweet Home. And it is, that house is historical Norwegian house. And if you see on the ends, on the roof, those little things sticking up, they're drag, they're like carvings that are shaped like dragon heads. <laughs> So they're called the Dragon Houses, and I love them. They're so cool looking. And this is right downtown, like by the fjord where in our town. And I just took it on a walk one day. So that one is available. And the other one I just finished. It took a while for this one because it's got a lot of detail. Um, this one is called Overflom. It's a place in Norway that's very popular for tourists. And it's going in and out of focus, but if you can see by the water in the fjord, um, there's a cruise ship docked there, which it's like right in the middle. It's a little red, red pointy part. Um, and this I took during a hike when we visited Flom. We met up with some friends who were taking a cruise there. And this was just the view from up there. So if you go to Flom, you can take this hike and see this view by a waterfall. And it has one of the most famous train rides up the mountain that you can take to get, um, not to this part, but a different part. And it's just gorgeous, gorgeous views as you can see. 
So I had a question on my last video about how long does it take me to like make these patterns and kind of the process. So I thought I would just answer here. Um, easier to explain than writing a big long thing. So yeah, it really depends. <laughs> um, and I'm still kind of working out my process and figuring out which way works best for me. Um, but I kind of estimated a range like you know there's first editing the pictures which may take an hour or so and then to make the pattern itself is obviously the longest part so you put it in and decide what size you have to kind of look and see what mock-ups are gonna look the best and once it the software does its thing I go through and adjust like I go through each color each stitch and there's usually a lot of random ninja stitches that I like to take out um, and just kind of some of them you can't avoid confetti because of just the nature of the design but I try to reduce some of that and make it more kind of stitcher friendly <laughs> um, and then that process just varies based on the size the colors I think it can take maybe the shortest was two hours and then this one was maybe five or six hours or more and this one was annoying because I originally did it in a smaller size and I did the entire thing, went through all the stitches um, and then at the end I wasn't happy with it. <laughs> so it just, you can see like all the details down in the bottom there, like houses and farms and just little things that really lost the detail at a smaller size. So this, I had, I just redid the whole thing. So this one may have taken me like 10 hours. <laughs> um, and then, uh, oh, what was I gonna say? Totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh yeah, this size is 700 wide, but it's only like 315 up and down. So the total number of stitches is not that bad, but I just needed to be longer so that you could get that level of detail that now I'm happy with. <laughs> so then after you do all the colors, like go through all the colors and stitches, then I go through the symbols because it automatically assigns like each color a symbol, but sometimes um, they're very, very similar symbols. And I, I'm actually working on some patterns right now that have very similar symbols and it's okay with Pattern Keeper, but not everyone has Pattern Keeper and like you can really easily confuse some of the symbols when you're like working them side by side. So I try, to have like just change out the symbols so they're different and it's not always possible with like 200 colors like you can't do that <laughs> because you have to have some that are similar there's just not enough symbols but for this one well this one's 98 colors so mostly there were I tried to change the symbols so they're different as possible and then you check through uh, where the symbols are like kind of look at them in the pattern make sure there's not too many similar ones like round ones all together because I don't know I just like it to be separate and I also try to have it so the darker colors have a darker symbol so that takes a little time and then you have to you know do all the uploads of the documents in the schemes list and then I make a separate cover page um, and then of course putting it in your shop and making a description and all that stuff so yeah it's a process <laughs> So I hope that answers your question. It's kind of a range and I think the total, I don't know, it could be like the shortest, maybe four hours, the longest. If you don't mess up, if you just do it once, maybe eight hours, I don't know, something like that. So moving on, <laughs> that was, yeah, my updates for patterns and I'm gonna do some more that I'm not sure which one I wanna do next. So I think what I'll do is put in Instagram like a few that I'm thinking of doing next and have you guys vote on what you want to see. So I'll link that link for my shop in the description. What else? Let's see. Yeah, now I'll show you my stitchy stuff. I got a lot. I'll have a finish and I'll show you that first. It is my New York pattern. Um, this one is from an Etsy shop as well, and it's actually a Ukrainian stitcher, designer, not stitcher, <laughs> um, Christy Patterns on Etsy. 
and I did this one for my mother-in-law for her 60th birthday in August and I took it to we have a local framing shop which is cool here in this little town that we have one but um you know it's very very expensive and I went and I had one other thing framed there for my daughter's birth sampler very pricey but for the nice like gifts and stuff like that I think it's worth it and I've never framed it framed a cross stitch myself but to make it a lot more affordable then they had they ask me to do the lacing myself because otherwise it would just be ridiculous because they do it I don't know based on hours of work um which they probably do it much more precise than me so it's probably a lot more time than I would spend doing it but they cut out the board for me they measured out the size and everything which is awesome because I suck at cutting out boards I don't have like you know a slicer or whatever and it would just be totally uneven so and I, I also don't have any acid free boards so so I did that and then went home and finally got myself to take the day yesterday to do the lacing I hate doing any kind of finishing it's such a pain I'd rather be stitching which I'm sure you can relate to but this I've done a few times on my projects where you lace the back to attach it um I learned how to do this on YouTube just different YouTube videos so if you want to search um out there you can easily find how to do this and there's a few different methods but the first one I found I just stuck with so yeah it's I don't know what the quality is but <laughs> but yeah it's done so I think maybe tomorrow I'll drop it off at the framers so they can get it done in June sometime and I wanted it so early because they're closed the entire month of July <laughs> just like most other places in Norway uh, July is vacation month for most people and usually people have the entire month of July off and usually it's not really an option you just have that month off so a lot of things are closed not much gets done over the summer in Norway but if you know that in advance you can plan a little bit so yeah I'll show you this hopefully when it's framed <sighs> yeah that feels nice get off a uh, whip off my list and no, now I don't have to worry about deadlines anymore because I don't have any gifts and if I do start another gift which I am planning on eventually then I'm not going to set a deadline to it I don't want to have to rush through it um, I did it for four days uh, alternating with my focus piece and I was just really sick of it by the end even though it's, it's a lot of block stitching so it went pretty quick but yeah no more deadlines I hope <laughs> so uh, I'd had one finish and then I had four, well, two new starts and then two restarts. That's the good ratio, right? One finish, four starts. Yeah. <laughs> so I will show you next. How about my two restarts that I did? Uh, we'll start with my giant one, San Fran by Artisy. Here is what it will look like. Yeah, and so I originally ordered this. I don't. I got a kit from Charting Creations, and I originally did it order a twenty-two count fabric that I was going to do over two. Um, but I started it, and I really just no, I did not like it at all. I was going so slow, and it was so bulky, and yeah not for me so I ordered a new fabric on 25 count easy guide because I know that's what I'm doing on my heaven and earth design and I know I like that but I did want to try 10 stitch just to make things go a little faster because I have so many big things that I want to do so I also reached out on Instagram to Alara and Suki the brown eyed stitcher who do a lot of tent stitch just to kind of get their advice so thank you ladies and I yeah I just kind of started and I'm not going to unfold the entire fabric because I just have a tiny tiny little start on this yeah not much to look at but it is how many stitches 103 stitches which makes for 0.50 percent 
Oh yeah, this needle minder I got from a giveaway from Amber Rogue Mama Stitcher. Oh, it's upside down. It says weekend forecast cross stitch with no chance of house cleaning or cooking. Aren't those weekends the best? So yeah, what I, what I started doing on this for, because there's different methods of doing tent stitch and I'm not an expert at it at all, but one is so that you do, so to create even tension, you'll, some people will do, um, it's hard to explain. I'm not, I'm just going to basically explain it. But if you start from the bottom right corner, no left corner up to the top right, which is what I normally do, you would do that direction for that whole line on your cross stitch. And then on the next line, you would do it the opposite. So bottom right to top left and do that the entire line. Um, so it's okay on this because it's just one color. So that's what I'm doing on this so far. And I'm gonna show you on another start that I did where that just was not working out. So yeah. And I think the coverage is okay. I mean, even though this is a dark color, if you go really up close, you can see the fabric through and it's 25 count two over one tent. But when you hold it back, it's fine. You can't tell. So. I'm happy with it. Um, so yeah, next new start I have, I mean, no, sorry, restart. It's Scorpio by Nora Corbett, one of the Zodiac girls. And thank you for anyone who made suggestions on my last video when I showed you all the fabrics and was wondering where to start, um, like orienting on the fabric, the head versus the bottom and all your advice <laughs> thank you very much and I got different answers <laughs> like some said start with the head in the blue and the bottom in the purple some said the opposite <laughs> so um, I went with the one that I originally was gonna do I'll show you but first here's what she will look like and it was a restart because I started it on this called for fabric oh come on focus which was fine but she has a lot of skin and it was tough to stitch and it was blending in and not really popping. And then I saw some other finishes um, on floss tube of people finishing them on beautiful hand dyed fabric. So I had to do that. <laughs> um, but as you know from my other videos, this is my nemesis. This, this girl, she's, she hates me. <laughs> like I can't do this right no matter what I do. And it's the only project like that. And it's on 32 count, which I have other ones on that and it's totally fine. Like my stitches look okay, it's easy. I don't know what it is about this project. I just can't do it right. I'm always messing up. I have to make sure it's the right way. So already on my new start, I frogged once and now I realize I'm off by an entire stitch. But look at this. Oh, I love how it pops on this fabric though. I really like that. I just have to figure out how to count apparently. So I did decide to have her head up in the blue and then her um, bottom part down in the purple. Um, so first, <laughs> first was a mess up from how I messed up last time. So I was putting away the colors and you know, the skin tones are very similar and I had them on bobbins and I apparently wrapped like a leftover thread around the wrong skin color. So I started with that in the wrong color and I was I didn't notice until I was going along her, this is like her, I don't even know, her upper back, wait. No, this is her upper back and this is like part of going down to her arm. But up here, I'd started in that, it was a darker, slightly darker color. And then I like ran out of thread, went to my next one. And I'm like, these are not the same color. So, <laughs> That was right off the bat a mistake. And I really didn't want to, I was like, maybe you won't notice. But then I was like, I mean, they have blends going between the skin. So if I just have like a chunk of like a whole different color, <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna look good. So I ended up frogging, I think it was three or four rows of that, redid it. Then I decided it's a good idea to just count over to this part. I never learn. So I went over here to start this section and then I got down to like where they kind of meet and realized I'm off. I'm up one too high on the side. 
so they don't meet up and I'm so mad <laughs> so mad uh, this is like maybe my fourth restart on her I don't even know and I just can't do her so I don't know I had to put her I was just so angry I don't know if I'm going to frog and start it again or fudge it oh because I think I would pull out this the smaller section which is but still it's all of that to pull out <laughs> oh yeah let me know what you guys would do I know like I did ask somebody who said they would just probably fudge it and like do one extra stitch here and one extra stitch down there but since I pull this out so rarely it's just like whenever it comes up on the wheel I feel like I'm gonna forget what I do even if I write it down like I'm gonna get confused um and just keep messing up and <laughs> just making her really strange looking so I might end up frogging it I just feel like though if I frog it I'm gonna mess up again somewhere that's just this project is cursed for me I don't know I don't know it'll probably just depend on my mood when I pull it out next oh it's so frustrating I'm going to do them but I'm like maybe fancy lady stitching isn't for me it's my first one I've ever done and my stitches also don't look great on them I don't know why like it looks fine on my other 32 counts <laughs> yeah I'm doing two others and there's no problem it's just this one so that's my story with Scorpio all right next uh, let's do another new start <laughs> that I did on new the new moon so just a little while ago on May 30th um, because so far this year I've been doing a new start on every new moon and this one so I did actually two um, new starts this month and I talked about before my May plans were to do two projects by artists who were thought to have bipolar disorder which was Van Gogh and Edvard Munch and I'm going to show you both of those but first I'm going to do um, Cafe Terrace which is by Van Gogh and this one is by charted by Cross Stitch Collectibles and oh my god what did I get myself into with this one it is so much confetti <laughs> it's ridiculous and I'm also doing trying this on with 10 stitch yeah I'll oh yeah I want to show you what it looks like first I'm sure you probably know but I picked this one because I always forget which like finger my touch ID works with and it didn't work so oh there we go so yeah, charted by Cross Stitch Collectibles. I chose it because, well, I like the picture, but also this looks exactly like a cafe that my husband and I went to in Italy on our honeymoon. Like, exactly. The cobblestones, the streets, just the way it's, like, oriented. And it was outside this little cafe at night, and it was just, it just exactly looks like that. So, had to do it. And it's really pretty. I got, there's another large size that you can do, which had a little more detail, but I kind of liked the effect on this picture of more of, I don't know, a little bit more pixelated. I just liked, I don't know, that for this pattern. So I am, I only have in this, how many stitches? 144 stitches for 0.22%. What is, how does this go? Yeah, it goes like this. 25 count again. Easy guide. My go-to, I guess now. Um, oh, and I also got this needle minder from, was it Orenko Originals, I believe? Um, and yeah, obviously perfect for this. Another Van Gogh. So, <laughs> look at all this confetti. In the first 10 by 10 block, there were 31 different colors. 31 can you see that okay I hope oh so I started this in that same method I told you about 10 stitch where you go one direction 
well I mean the stitches are all in the same direction but just the way you stitch them I did it I was supposed to do one row in one direction and one in the other and I started doing that but because there's so much confetti it was just getting so confusing and with parking it was like you'd have to park in the same hole because one would be going from left to right one would be going from right to left and it was it was just a nightmare so I'm like no F that I am just doing it all in the same direction I don't care if it warps the fabric a little bit fine because I want to actually enjoy stitching it yeah so that's my plan for that one and this took me so I have never really kitted up a giant project myself before like they've been a little smaller otherwise I've had I've ordered kits so I was like oh yeah I'm just gonna start this I have I did this on Memorial Day and here in Norway, I still have that off because I have an American job. And I was like, okay, every, my daughter's at daycare, husband's working. I'm just going to spend this whole day stitching, relaxing, at least till my daughter comes home. And I naively thought, oh, I'm just going to start. And I realized, I don't even know how many colors are in this. It doesn't say, but I spent the entire time kidding it up. Yeah, so not what my plan was which is why I got so little stitched on it and I'm going to show you I tried a new system for um the floss on this one that I actually got the idea from the needleberry stitcher on floss tube I'll link her below and if you like this and want to see like how she does it definitely go check out her videos she has whole videos on how she does her um kidding up and organizing for floss so I got the idea from her and it took a while but I really like it I just don't really know how to put it in a project bag but basically what I did I got I found these like tags already shaped like this and I had to just cut them but because they were a little longer and I got like a hole punch a big one so I could just punch the holes in them and then write the symbol on both sides and you know cut all the skeins they're not even obviously but you know just kind of cut them and then loop them around here so you can just pull out one strand at a time and what I did because there's so many colors is I just tied together the different numbers so they're easier to find in an order so the 300s are here in order 600s here and I did that for all of them so I really like that system and what I'm thinking which the needleberry stitcher does is eventually having all of your like set of DMC when you're not even when you're not like using them for a project stored like this so instead of being stored how I have them now which is on bobbins and boxes um to keep them like this and use like to hang them like put a binder ring through here and then hang it on whatever anything and you can easily kind of sort through them see the colors better they don't get twisted and then you can just like grab them for a project and they're ready to go like ready to use the floss you don't have to cut them you don't have to unwind them and I really liked that idea so I might do that I might kind of slowly convert as I go um, projects into or my floss into that method so we'll see but just trying it out for now yeah definitely go check out her videos if you're interested in seeing that what else that was all my new no it wasn't all my new starts but I'm gonna show you my other new start as I go through my whips I think all right hold on coffee needed mm. oh one thing I didn't mention um, I was thinking of showing you guys a little bit of, um, where I live in Norway and kind of like the inspiration for the patterns I've been making. So I filmed a little bit when I was out for a walk on one of the nice days that we had because it was so, um, it's been so cold, which I'll show you when we get to my temperature tree <laughs> and kind of gray and rainy. It's been kind of a crappy May, even April, only a few days of nice weather. So on that nice day, I filmed, um, just on a walk by my house and then a little bit of our downtown area so I think I'm gonna put those clips at the end if you're interested in that so on to whips that I worked on Whew. already like a half hour in <laughs> finally getting the whips so 
Carpenter Tree by Stitch and Mommy on Etsy. And I'm caught up except for today. Um, but all of May is done and you can see how cold it was. <clears throat> like losing my voice. So the warmest day are the light, light yellows. And there wasn't many of those. I think the warmest temperature we had all year for a high was 68 Fahrenheit, which might be 18, 19 Celsius. So yeah, kind of blah. We even had like green, we had like some winter temperature days in May. <laughs> Why? I feel like it was much nicer last year, but I don't know. Um, and it's on 18 count Ada. I think that's it. Uh, next is my new focus piece. It's kind of new. Basically, it's been my focus piece for a month. And that is Children on the Beach. I'll show you the picture. The artwork by Mary Cassatt. And, oh, I'm sorry for that glare. You can see that land in. Okay, there we go. And charted by Cross Stitch Collectibles. And this is the one of the ones where the symbols are very, very similar. And, you know, kind of a lot of ninja stitches, but well, it's not too, too bad. Uh, so I am, oh, how many did I do? I did 3,578 since last time. Yes. Okay. And it is, or how many does it have total? It has 16,603 total, 14.96%. Why couldn't I make it to that last, to the 15%? You ask? Well, I was really trying, but I really need to keep a strict kind of bedtime schedule, <laughs> a strict sleep schedule because if I don't get eight hours of sleep after like a few days, I get really, really irritable. So it's not worth it. I really wanted to just stay up and do that extra like 0.04%. But yeah, it'll get there today because I'll be working on this today. So I'll reach 15% today. And this is on 18 count Ada, two over one. Oh, yeah, so I think the boat might have been done last time, but I'm not sure. And I think, I think I'm going to get to the top of that first baby's head here, somewhere around here, which I'm really excited about. So, yeah, that'll be fun. Um, what else I have? The Scream, my new, other new start. Um, let me show you what it will look like, as I'm sure you already know. Oh, not that. Yeah. A famous painting by Edvard Munch, who was a Norwegian artist. Oh, I hope, yeah. And as somebody told me in the comments, there are actually four versions of this painting, which I did not know. And I looked those up. And they're basically the same, but in different, done in different mediums. And I kind of looked up also a little more about the painting, like the inspiration behind it. And they aren't sure if this was the inspiration for this, but probably because he wrote, he kept a journal or diary. And he said in there one time he was walking with friends um, on along like a river. Oh, no, fjord. I think it was the fjord. Yeah, so you can see in the back, those two shadows are two people. And he had stayed behind as they walked on, just feeling this overwhelming, like, melancholy and depressed feeling and feeling like, like the entire world just kind of opened up in a giant screen. And he said, all at the same time, the colors of the sky turned a fiery orange and red. So obviously that was the inspiration for this painting. So... Yeah. Powerful stuff. Um, anyway, so 
Let's see, this one was so fun to stitch. I did it just the day I started it and one more day yesterday. Oh, it's such bright colors. Oh, it's charted by Renko Originals, by the way. Oh, so look at that, look how colorful. Look at those bright colors. A lot of 606 red, which was kind of like, whoa, <laughs> to do a lot of, but so fun. I love the colors. And there's really not a lot of confetti at all in here. It goes really quick. And I'm interested or curious to see how this is going to come out because it only has like 40 colors, I think. Um, and it does, in the mock-up, it does look pretty pixelated. But, <laughs> you know, I'm curious to see how that'll turn out. Like maybe more like a painting, not sure. But it is fun to stitch. And I like how those colors, like the reds and oranges, pop with the blues and greens oh, so pretty the colors are really pretty actually i can show you what they look like all together well it's kind of a mess right now <laughs> oh <laughs> don't get stressed out by this <laughs> um but yeah two floss drop things but look how pretty i love it it's so colorful um, this white though, I'm probably not going to use much of because in the chart it has, it has a white border going around the entire thing for like, I think a couple different rows. So charted in this and all, and included in like the number of stitches, it's like a white border all around, which I'm not going to do. So it seems like I have a lot bigger percent done or a lot more stitches done than I actually have. Um, because it says I'm at 9.22% already. Which I am, because I'm not, you know, I kind of checked off the white as finished, but it doesn't really show you how much that is, in, like, relative to the rest. Because I think there was, like, 2,000-something stitches in just white that I'm not doing. So, how many did I do? Uh, 876. No, 67 <laughs> stitches. Eight, 867 is in there right now. But, yeah, that's really fun. Um, it's on 18 count Ada and I purposely did this kind of creamy color because I just thought that this picture would look better on that than on white. So yeah, that one's fun. All right, get in there. Next, so I'm, I was excited to get back to my system of stitching where I would do every other day my focus and then I would spin the wheel of whips on the other day. So it would be a surprise. And I got back to doing that again a few days after I had that finish and then some starts and restarts. So next I, I did the wheel and it came up on my last focus piece together by Jim Warren and charted. Oh, not that one. I'm doing the wrong tab again. And charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. There it is. The regular size version. And I'm going up in that corner of the tree is where I'm at. And I am doing it one over one full cross. Some cat hair on it. <laughs> um, on 25 count. This entire Q-snap is basically going to be this tree. But I did 587 stitches on it. There's 30,088 total and it's 9.71%. So now you can kind of see the different shades in the sky. Like it got lighter, it's getting lighter here. And then this is kind of like a shadow. So it's really, really detailed of the, the different like shadings and colors, which is really cool. And down here, so I was like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna go all the way down to this line, <laughs> the bottom of the Q-snap. And I pulled it back out, I'm like, what was I thinking? So I'm gonna stop like up here and go across because yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Okay. Next, I have a couple projects that I do on certain days of the month. So I do um, 
like on Halloween stitching I do the 13th and 31st of every month and then a Christmas piece that I'm doing on the 25th and that was of course the family heirloom tablecloth and I did a good amount this time on this one and this again was um, my husband's great grandmother who started it 20 years ago at 93 and um, did quite a bit um, but you know um, his, his grandma didn't really want to finish it so she gave it to me when she learned I was stitching and here it is where I'm at I can't show you a picture of what it'll look like because it only has the pattern but yeah so this is a lady well her pants coming up and then she's feeding one of the deer there's another deer up here and it's a very very big count and it uses a whole strand of yarn so a very different way of stitching for me oops focus yeah and i'm gonna have to repeat this entire design on the other end of the tablecloth which i'm not excited about <laughs> but you know if i do it slow i'll get there in time and it's like stitching with a giant blanket over you. And I stitched this one in hand, which I don't normally do, but it's just easier on this. And this is one of the designs that his great grandmother had done. And of course she gritted it, which is awesome. Or just like the down the middle lines, which I would never do, so. <laughs> and actually his grandparents are in town now and I'm gonna show her this, but I'm like, please don't look at the back. like. You know in the old fashion and some people now like are super like concerned about the back and don't want to have any messes and knots and carrying and I mean you can't carry on this really because it's so see-through but there's some of that when it goes over the stitches and there's some knots because sometimes I get knots and can't get them out and it's kind of a mess on the back so I'm like I can't show her the back <laughs> um all right I have my Goliana sampler. And I've already enabled a couple people to start this from seeing it here. It's an Etsy shop. And it's, what is it? The Goliana stitching? Goliana? Goliana cross stitch is the shop name. Oh, sorry, the glare again. Okay. And it is a sampler from Things About 2020. So it has things about COVID, um, lockdown, fires in Australia. Um, and what I'm doing is two different colors where I have one color for like the general stuff and then one color for the hidden things because I don't want to hide them. I want to show them. And it's a big fabric. It's on 16 count Ada, but it's like more of a floppy Ada. So I did the whole border because the first time I did this, I, or the, no, the second time I did this, I made it too short and it wouldn't all fit. So I did most of the border and here it is. On this one, I did 515 stitches. It has 4,146 total and it's at 12.78%. So the reddish color is, are the hidden things. So this is, each of these are two meters apart, which was the recommendation in Europe. And then the COVID molecule. <laughs> and then on the top, on the border and the bottom, the red on the top is, this is representing a film strip because of all the extra TV and movies we all watched during COVID. So this is nice for a travel project because one, there's only two colors and then you can, I'm still saving some of the border along the side for times when I am traveling and just not really able to concentrate that much. All right, I think we just have one more. And that is Halloween Quaker, 
which I did on just one day, I think, since last the 31st. And this one is by Lila Studio. And it is on 32 count in Belfast linen. Um, this, like, see, this one is on 32 count and same two over two and I have no problems with it. It goes quick. My stitches look decent. I don't make mistakes, like, <laughs> or many mistakes. Um, so I don't know what it is with the other one, but there are, or I did 487 stitches on this one and there are 11,078 total and I'm at 61.55%. So I'm the furthest along of all my projects on this one. And let's see what I worked on since the last time over here was I finished this third bird and I did this pumpkin, these two little symbols, and then started the word Halloween. That Y is gonna be for happy. And then look, a little witch is the O, which I didn't know until I started stitching it. And she's going to have a purple hat on that comes up here. So that's cute. Yep, Halloween Quaker. Oh, now my shoulder's bothering me from like holding all this stuff up. So I did something to my shoulder because... You know, I have a toddler who I pick up and I carry like on this arm all the time. And so it's like pulling on my shoulder. And for a while now I've had like shoulder pain and like just tweaks and pinches in my shoulder, which is really annoying. So I've started to do some like shoulder postural therapy stuff, which has helped, but it's just a pain and it doesn't help. You know, I'm hunching over stitching all the time too. The aches and pains. So that was all my whips. I just have a little tiny bit of haul, which again was, I ordered it before I said, I'm gonna stop with the haul. It just took a long time to get here. So I still haven't bought much. Okay, I, I buy now when I get gift money. So I got some on Mother's Day. So I have bought some stuff from that, but, <laughs> um, but this was from before and I got it when I did an order from Marinko Originals. And I joined the bandwagon and I'm doing the, or at some point, <laughs> the year in the woods. Okay, yeah, glare. Focus, focus, focus. There. You know, you've seen this a million times, but uh, I do love them. And I do love the idea of series. So, yeah, I had to get these. I think this is the second one. The swans. I love the background or the fabric color for these love. I love like the oranges and yellows against that like gray blue. I love it. And the jackrabbit. Oh, come on, go. But I don't know when I'm going to get the rest of these patterns because I really I'm going to try not to buy things unless it's with money from gifts. Um, the exception is <laughs> I'm going to be going to the U.S. for a visit end of June. Actually, it's coming up like two weeks. Oh my God. And yeah, I might, I'm, I'm going to get more haul from that because it, I've, I haven't been there in three years. And of course you can get so much more stuff there than here in Norway. So we're going to go. We're gonna go shopping <laughs> so that'll be fun and I have to kit up my own design because I'm gonna start one of my own projects or my own patterns that I designed so kit up that kit up a couple other things or at least start to and then see what's on sale <laughs> so that'll be fun so I think that is all that's all for today I think that's enough Whew! I need to like rest my voice <laughs> right now but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching and stick around if you want to see um, some clips of around my home. Bye.
So I'm going for a walk down our street. And it's a beautiful day. And our place is down there a little ways. And here probably the water coming down from the mountain into the fjord. downtown <laughs> in our teeny tiny little downtown we got a couple of art shops museum a couple of little tiny grocery stores people taking boat tours and my favorite mountains it's also I think one of the most painted mountains in Norway or the world? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, on nice days like this, there's no prettier place. Oh yeah, and then over and those little white pointy houses, buildings, that's where the health center doctor is. So yeah, I just wanted to show you downtown. <laughs>